Bracers Unity Tutorial, because fuck those time wasters. This week, Global Illumination, because it is time to make your interior scene looks real, baby. Now, repeat after me. The more global illuminated you want your scene to look, the more objects you must mark as static. Pause this video, say this 10 times, and then continue with the video. For the purpose of this tutorial, I will select every object in the scene and mark them as static. Understand that this is highly improbable in real life unless you are doing an architectural walkthrough. That's it. You can pretty much close the video now. Unity will start to calculate the GI for your scene and it will look more realistic than it was before once the calculations are done. What? You want it to look even more uber? Oh, that's gonna take you like three extra steps. Let's go! We will be tackling the lights first. Always choose mix. This will make sure that the light works for both GI marked objects and non-GI marked objects. Keep intensity at 1. I have never encountered a situation where the GI looks realistic when the intensity is above 1. Understand that this peculiarity only applies to light objects. Material-based light source can have their emissive intensity ramped up to insanity with the GI actually responding correctly to the resulting intensity. If you are from the future looking at this tutorial, hey, have Unity fixed this issue with the light source yet? Set shadow type to soft shadow and set resolution to very high. Adjust bake shadow angle to control the softness of the shadows. Step 2. The glowing materials. <laughs> For most tutorial videos to even come to this point, this is probably part 16 of their 25 part series on global illumination in Unity, with each video having a length of at least 6 minutes because you know like it's fucking subspace geometry combined with quadrant field theory analysis, right? <laughs> okay, I'm probably exaggerating but you get the point. Alright, let's get back to the fucking point so that you will never have to suffer through those videos again. Make them glow by setting the emissive level higher than zero. You may choose between real time and baked. Picking real time will allow the glowing material to also interact with non static objects as well. But since I have already set everything as static, I shall choose baked here. Step 3 Windows Lighting. Set these two bullshits to zero. These two options shouldn't even exist in the first place. Check Final Gather. Warning. The following step you're about to take will seriously slow down Unity to a crawl. So only execute the following step when your game is literally done. Now it's time to seriously fuck up the rendering time at the expense of quality. Match these numbers or go even higher if you want absolute perfection. However, because this is a tutorial and I can only stare at the screen for so long before I want to throw a baby, I have set it to a moderate level. Change the generate GI mode to directional specular, also known as global illumination on full blast. Now a lot of you might be asking, what does those numbers stand for? Well, this number set the density of the global illumination map Unity will be using. The denser it is, the more smooth and realistic the result will be. To actually see that map so they can decide just how dense it should be, Go to the Scene tab and select UV Charts. This information is very, very valuable when you're trying to optimize your rendering time. That is all there is to Unity GI that actually matters. Guys, if you want to see more straight to the point Unity tutorials that doesn't involve a bunch of guys talking on stage about global illumination for an hour, leaving you wondering what it is that you've actually learned from it because you have better things to do, Please support me in Patreon. And my Indiegogo for this series have only 27 days left to reach its goal. Together, we can read the world of lengthy Unity tutorials. See you next week.